we could use leaf map and learn how to visualize very large data sets. So far we've used Folium map as our backend, which is great. You can create really nice maps from data set that you downloaded, GeoJSON, GeoData frame, and variety of other data sources. What if your data size is very big? The Folium map backend is good enough for maybe a few thousand features. As you start adding more features than that, you, your browser will not be able to handle that. You need to upgrade to a backend that can actually leverage the full power of your computation. So the, the way to do this is to utilize a, a graphics library. There's a library called DeckGL, which is an optimized library that uses the GPU along with the CPU to render very large files in your browser. And it supports working with very large data set. Let's look at the DeckGL. So this is the JavaScript library that allows you to visualize very large data set interactively in your browser. It is able to use all the compute resources you have locally and render that in your browser. So this is what a lot of people use now to build apps using JavaScript. If you want to use this library from Python, there is a, li a library called Lawnboard. Lawnboard is a new library that uses DeckGL in the backend. You write Python code using Lawnboard and it'll create this like GL apps for you. And it can support renting very large data sets in your Jupyter notebook. It is meant for visualization within your notebook environment. So you're doing analysis and suddenly you have some data frame. You said, let me take a look. I want to interactively explore that. And this is the way to do this. LeafMap has support for Lawnboard. So you can now use LeafMap with the Lawnboard backend and visualize large data sets. Let's see how that works. We want to take the, the reverse data set that we had worked with in the assignment. It's a hydro reverse data set. We install the required packages first. We are using the DeckGL backend, which is a lawn board backend for LeafMap. So instead of just saying from leaf map, import leafmap.folium map as leafmap, we now change our backend to a DeckGL since we are trying to visualize very large data set. We also need to install lawn board if you're using this. So if you're running this in a local environment, you have to install lawn board. After that, we download the data. We are taking our hydro reverse data set, doing the pre-processing for the country. For this example, we are filtering all rivers in the United States. So we are applying the filter and we now have this river GDF, which is 180,000 line features, maybe more than a million vertices, a very large data set. If you try visualizing this using Folium or Leaflet, it's just gonna crash. It can't render all of this but we can now have a DeckGL backend so we can just render it just the way we render any leaf map layer. So we create a leaf map map and we say add GDF. We give a GDF, all of this options you can skip, but right now this is a basic visualization. We say color blue width of two pixels. Apart from the basic parameters, like what you want to visualize and what you want to zoom to it, all of the other stuff comes from a lawn board. So if you want to customize the visualization further, you go to Lawnboard and see which are the options. We'll learn about this in a second. Let me run this. So now we are adding this, you know, a few million vertices data frame to our Jupyter notebook and we get a map. We'll zoom out and you can see, I can see everything. And this is in full fidelity. I can zoom in and I'm able to see this. It's interactive. I can go and as I hover over it, I see all the attributes as well. So now I'm able to visualize very large data sets. GL says they can render up to 100 million features in your browser, depending on your RAM, et cetera, and what kind of GPU you have. They say on a MacBook Pro, they were able to render 100 million points. So it supports very large data sets. And again, since it's leaf map, you can also integrate this in an app that you're building. This is suitable for having data locally. If you have data locally or just a regular file somewhere, you want to visualize it, this is a great way to do it. You say, this is great, I could explore this, but I want to really create some nice map. If I'm trying to create an app and I want my data to look nice, I want to visualize this further. We have to learn the options for Lawnboard. So let's look at the Lawnboard documentation. Lawnboard has the idea of rendering different layers, different configurations. So if you want to render line layer, they call it a path layer. So if you want to render line layer, you say, what are the options supported by path layer? If you want to render a polygon layer, you will say, what are the options supported by polygon layer? A scatter plot layer is a point layer. So if you have points and you want to visualize this, you have to create options for the scatter plot layer. So for the path layer, we have all the options here. You can see these are all the different options. Pickable, opacity, width, et cetera, and you know, other things. They also have this function, get width and get color, which also support a static 
option to say this is a width like two pixels or we can give a list of width for each line so now we can create this one extra column of width based on some other attribute we'll use the upland area so the area of a basin will style the line width proportional to the upland area so let's do some more processing we'll create a new attribute called width where we'll assign a width from 0 0.1 to 1 pixel based on the the upland area of the river. So the large rivers will be styled in thicker lines, small area will be in smaller lines. There's also colors. If you want to specify a color for the color, we have to give the just a color that you want, or we can give a, a color ramp. So we can say, I want to give a color ramp, a continuous ramp or a discrete color ramp, where you say, I have this column, the value is X, give this red color, the value is Y, give blue color and so on. So we can create this discrete color ramp. Okay, we need to do some more pre-processing of our data. We'll just say, want to create a color ramp by saying we'll divide the data into, let's say by this main river, or uh, main river is the name of the river. We'll say we'll assign some unique color to each main river attribute. We'll just randomly choose 10 color color ramp. So we say I have 10 colors. We'll split it by the main river. We assign some color name and for each color name, we'll assign some color. So we have our spectral color ramp that we are using and we can assign some color to this. If you read the documentation, the preferred way to assign colors, et cetera, for lawn board is using this palettable library, which has got a bunch of palettes similar to matplotlib. So you can use that. You can also manually specify a list of colors if you want. And I grabbed most of this from the lawn board documentation on how to assign color ramp and how to do a discrete color ramp. So now we have this color map. We can update our visualization and say, I want a base map. So we can specify a base map. We can say my color map is a spectral map width, take it from this width attribute. So the larger the river, the thicker it should be. And the color would come from this color attribute that we just added. So different rivers based on their main river attribute will be colored differently. So all rivers from the same main river, all the tributaries to the main river will be colored in the same color. And we can run this. And now we get your map with a different base map. So we chose a dark base map and we have different colors for each river. And you can see now we have this really pretty visualization where each rivers are visualized in different widths and different colors. I can change my color ramp and I'll get different colors. And I'm able to zoom in, explore this and see this interactively. Similarly, you can just save it as an HTML file and share it around. Remember the HTML file will also have the data. So it will be a really large HTML file. But again, you can, it's portable if you wanted to do it. You can also do this inside of an app, whichever app platform that you're using supports leaf map. You can just directly use that or use Lawnboard directly to visualize the data.